Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is electrical disconnects, all right, fusing, and troubleshooting. All right, so a couple things I just want you to, to know is when you are servicing and when you're pulling in and out the disconnects, what you should be doing is not putting them in all the way. All right, so in this case, it's off right now when you have this upside down. You're going to slide this in. All right, and then you're going to tap it in. All right, it's important to not be be like touching the electrical connections and then not touching it and touching it again, and that's what's created on this on this one burn marks. All right, but I'm not so concerned just about this. I'm more concerned about the compressor. So um, the actual compressor, you know, I slide this in. All right, and then I tap it in. All right, just to make a good solid electrical connection, just like you're turning on a switch. Instead of it sparking and coming <clears throat> coming in, making contact, turning on the compressor for about a quarter second or something, pulling it off and pushing it back in again, that can cause uh, the compressor to go out on a high limit, you know, high high amperage. All right, uh, and then then when you finally do get it in, your condenser fan turns on, but your compressor does not. All right, so it's important to just slide this in partially <clears throat> and then tap it in to make sure you have a good electrical connection. All right, the other thing is just because you have this does not mean that it's a non-fuse disconnect. In, in this case, right here, there's a fusible uh, portion right, right, right below. Now, the reason somebody may have installed a fusible disconnect is maybe somebody did a change out of an air conditioning system. And instead of lowering the breaker size due to the higher sear readings of the outdoor uh, condensers or heat pumps or maybe even a geothermal unit, Instead of reducing the breaker size, what they've done is they've fused it down outside. All right, so all I can say is you want to make sure that you have the proper wire on your on your whip, and it needs to be a THHN uh, wire or something like that stranded uh, that's uh, that's rated for that to be in your uh, your seal type. All right, so in your your whip, you know you want to have your stranded copper being the right size all right the right the right uh, gauge thickness so for instance if you were working with 30 amp then you would use 10 gauge all right and if it was 20 amp you'd use 12 gauge if it was 15 amp you'd use 14 gauge uh, so on and so forth um, so you just want to make sure you're working with the correct wire size in some instances when it's not fusible uh, disconnects and it's just a a a uh, disconnect, non-fusible non disconnect, you can uh, sometimes, like they say, you can use a lower wire size, but I would always recommend that you use the same wire size as the as the breaker, all right, or past that at the fuses, after that, you know, the same size as the fuses. It's important to, to use the proper fuses or um, the, the breaker and have the proper wire gauge size because what happens is if an outdoor unit says the max amp rating is 30 amp well guess what all of the wire inside of that unit that outdoor unit is rated for 30 amp all right <clears throat> so if you have a 40 amp breaker on that and you have wire that's in the outside unit that's that's only rated for 30 you know potentially if there is ever you know uh, locked compressor or something like that <clears throat> before the breaker would pop potentially the wire could get hot enough to maybe you know potentially start a fire or something so the whole point is you're doing everything safely and correctly so that there's no excuses right all right but anyway that's why maybe somebody would have fused this down and back when they didn't make fuses that were say 25 and 35 amp but now they do to accommodate all this all right um you have a couple different um, fusible disconnect handles right here. The fuse holders, so these are 30 amp fuse holders and these are 60 amp fuse holders. Really the only difference is they take out these, the, the, this portion right here, at least on the Midwest version right here. Uh, they just take out these portions right here and then you're left with, with these which are the same as this and then it will hold uh, the 60 amp. Right, so as far as testing for voltage on these, what you can do is you want to look at your disconnect handle. All right. So what we're doing is we're actually connecting this and this on this particular one. Versus here, you're connecting 
the top and bottom. All right. So without taking the cover off, you're going to need to pit, try to figure out which ones are the voltage and which ones are not the voltage. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to take the multimeter, all right, on V for volt CC, and I'm going to come right into here. And what I'll do is I'll take this one and this one first. I'll see if I have 240 volts. Then I'll take the outside ones. Do I have 240 volts? Then I'll take this one. Do I have 240 volts? Then I'll take this one. Do I have 240 volts? And by then, uh, if you don't have 240 volts, then you know that something before this portion is stopping it. In this case, it could be the fuses. And as far as fuses go, you can just pop them right out. And you can take a resistance reading on them. All right. So you can just take your multimeter, turn it to resistance, and check it. It should, should not really have any resistance on it. Okay. These are slow blow fuses. All right. So you see I have 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms of resistance, and that's just due to my electrical connection mostly. Um, but it really should not have much resistance at all. All right. If, if not, it should be pretty close to 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. These fuses are actually rated to handle that 100 amps of inrush current uh, for the outdoor uh, units. So, for instance, an outdoor unit that runs 6 amps may run 100 amps for the first, say, quarter second or so when it turns on. If it takes in a steady current that's higher than what it's rated for, then it'll pop. All right. There's no resetting them. Then you just got to throw them away and, and put new ones in. I will tell you that I've gone to job sites where one of the fuses is blown, okay? I replace the fuse, I check the charge, check the amp draw, make sure the amp draw is not climbing, all right? And actually, over time, the amp draw should lessen on a unit. So say you got it running after about five minutes or so, uh, the amperage should start reducing. Say it's from five to 15 minutes, the amperage should reduce because what's happening is you're actually uh, lowering the pressures all right, in the system um, because you're cooling the house. So most, most of the time that's happening. It's only lessening a little bit you know, or lowering a, a little bit you know, as far as the amperage, but it's, it's noticeable when you're reading it on the multimeter. All right? But I've gone to sites where just one has blown and not the other one, and, and it's to no fault of the system, it seems. Okay? Uh, maybe there was low voltage one day, you know, uh, from the the, uh, the power plant or something like that. Uh, maybe there was lightning, maybe some type of anomaly. Uh, but I will tell you that I found plenty of bad dis uh, bad fuses and the disconnects. Just one, you know, one of the two bad, and I'll start it up and there's really no problem and I don't get a call back after I replace it with the same correct amperage maybe you know they are wearing down over time you know a lot of those things are are in play so just for your own knowledge it potentially could be nothing wrong with your system you know don't don't say oh no my system is is bad now or something like that see what happens put the put that in check the charge check the amp draw make sure the amp draw is not climbing and uh and you should be good all right so i just want to make sure that that you are aware of that i keep uh fuses in the truck every five amps you know so i got 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 60 you know amp fuses all in the truck right there all right so just want to make you aware of that make sure that you on in your whip you have the proper gauge wire okay and that it's the thhn or thwn um, and you're putting that in your in your whip all right, so make sure that this wire gauge size matches or exceeds, all right, uh, the, the amperage rating of your fuses or your, your breaker, okay? So you know with these plastic disconnects, what I'm doing is I'm not knifing this out. What I'm doing is I'm actually taking a unibit on it and I'll unibit it to the proper size. It seems to be the best option for the plastic uh, boxes so you don't end up breaking the outer ring. So for three quarter seal tight, you would break both rings. If it was just half inch seal tight, uh, you would just break the the inner ring. And then as far as uh, these go right here, if you can see, say I wanted to knock out um, the three quarter ring, 
what I'll do is I'll be knocking it right near where the one inch seal tight ring is, okay? Right in from there. Okay, I'll be knocking it out right in there so that this one pushes in but does not break that weld. All right, but once you get this ring in and this ring in, you can grab it with pliers and just wiggle it until it pops off. All right, and then you can put your uh, nail connector in right there. All right. Another huge thing, if you find stranded aluminum connections, all right, you want to use an antioxidant compound. You know, aluminum has a lower melting point, so you want to make sure that if you have stranded aluminum coming to your disconnect, <clears throat> that you, you know, with a breaker off, you would put Noelux into the connection right here, or, or uh, you know, antioxidant compound. Noelux is just a, a trademark right there, but um, antioxidant compound into the electrical connection just to make sure you have a solid connection so that the electrical wire doesn't melt due to the high amperage and then end up uh, coming away from the electrical terminal and then sparking, okay? That can create a fire. So you want to make sure uh, that you have the right product right there that you're using. All right, but if it's stranded copper, you're fine. You know, you can just tighten it right in. But you want to follow, um, you know, normally your electrician is going to be doing most of this work. But say you're on a service call and you notice something's wrong, I just want you to be aware of, of how to troubleshoot it and to uh, recommend what needs to be done at a job and as well as, you know, when you're doing change outs and things. All right. Another thing is when you're using your, your outdoor seal tight right there, uh, what you can do is I would not recommend uh, this version right here because what happens is you're, you're tightening your seal tight right onto this little foam ring and then you're relying on this rubber gasket. This rubber or rubber washer a lot of times I've found just cracked just due to um, old age or broken and not making a good connection. This is just my perspective, okay? So if somebody likes those, you know, I'm just trying to give you my perspective on things. <clears throat> this type of a ring holds up a lot better, all right? As well, when you have a seal like this that's multi-part, okay? It's a lot better than just relying on this one piece of foam. All right, so even though this may be quicker and maybe you might find it easier, or maybe even cheaper, I would highly recommend uh, a connector such as this, you know, or a straight connector, okay? okay? But in the case of a disconnect like this, all right, what you're doing is when you're trying to read voltages, you know um, that when you're going up and down, your electrical connections are touching here and here. So basically, what you do know is your power is coming in from the bottom or your power is coming in from the top, depending on the, the make of the manufacturer right here. So you're going to put your probes here, or you're going to put your probes here inside this electrical disconnect. All right. So if we turn this to volts right here, we can come into the electrical box and read it like this. Or we can come up here and read these electrical connections. All right, and if we don't have 240 volts, then we've got to find where our problem is. All right, and if it leads back to the breaker box, you know, unless you have an electrical license, you should be calling an electrician. All right, but I hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and uh, if you have any other questions, write them in the comments below, and we'll see you next time at EEC Service Tech Channel.